Enjoy with me as I go down memory lane of the day I spent in Pasadena with two members of our online church, my twin, Lynn, and my friend, Jeanette, followed by my cosmetology teacher. Deep conversation. Enjoy. We're having a wonderful time. We just pigged out and our bellies are full. <laughs> this is Jeanette Abram. She and I have known each other since 1987. That's a long time. So, so you know, young, and I'm the one that's jealous, y'all. So she knows. Here we are, the old lady with the young, beautiful sister, Jeanette Abram. I love you, girl. I love you more. <laughs> what a surprise to come and see me. Yeah. You made my day. God sent oh. you here to me. Thank you, girl. Because I needed you, Pat. I love you. And tell me, oh, no, you. you're gorgeous. She's not, she needs to stop. But she is beautiful. <laughs> She's beautiful. In and out. And I love her. Praise the Lord. This is my cosmetology teacher, Bessie Darden. Bessie Radcliffe Darden. And she is a heck of a woman. So you guys need to hear what she's got to say. She's all over the video that I just did. Because some of you people are so hard up, so desperate, and you don't value yourself, and you stay in these relationships, and you got two demons working on you, the demon of seduction and the demon of addiction. And some of y'all are addicted to abuse, yeah. and you don't realize it. The actual video of our conversation is about to begin. I beg you to please pardon the background noise. I didn't realize it was as loud as it was until I did the playback, but I did what I could to make it not so distracting. She's discussing a victim of abuse and her reaction to how difficult things were for her. Listen to what Bessie said about it. I said, but your children are angry with you. Thank you. I said, they're angry with you because they saw what you put up with. Right. You put up with, and they couldn't do anything about it. I said, you said one of your sons tried to help you and your husband hit him in the head <gasps> and didn't do anything about it. And so, abuse, I had a, a pastor that I, I, I just lost all respect for and meant every word I said. I asked him. He had some, it, was, it, was, it was something on that order. We were having a meeting. And it was about, I guess, marriage. Yeah. And so he's gotten with the women and what they want. And I asked him, I said, you mean to tell me you would counsel a woman to stay with an abusive husband? Thank you. And he said, well, that's biblical. And I said, no, no it's, it's not. not. I said, it's not biblical. I said, God said a man is to treat his wife as himself. Thank you. You become one. Are you going to be abusive to yourself? I turned around and walked out. I know you did. And I did not. Mm -mm. That you is can't not love somebody and tell them to stay somewhere where they're constantly being hurt, beaten. What is that? That's, that's, that is not biblical. No. And I said, I'm sorry, but I read the Bible too. Thank you. And it, it has never said anything like that, whether it's the Old or the New Testament. Oh my goodness. When you read 1 Corinthians 13, that's my favorite chapter. That is my favorite. Thank you. If you can't tell what love is supposed to act like after reading that, baby, you're blind, crippled, and crazy. You know that is my favorite. Oh, 13. Mm -hmm. And what is at the end, and the greatest of these is, is love. love. <laughs> okay, that's my thing. Right. And when you think that this man loves you so much. No, that ain't love. My grandmother told me years and years ago, mm -hmm. and she said, I tell my girls, my grandmother raised me, uh, and she said, I tell my girls, don't ever let a man hit you right. Unless it's love, Pat. Hmm, thank you. It's a tap. That's right. Unless it's like love, Pat. Mm -hmm. He is not to get away with it. Mm -mm, never. So me as a girl asked her, Mama Rosie, did Dad, which was my grandfather, right, ever hit you? Now this was way, way back then. And she said, 
yes once. Mm -hmm. And I said, you did? She said, I said, what did you do? She said, baby, you know we're in the country. You know everything is wood burning. She says, I walked out the back, we're in the country, to the wood pile. And I started picking up pieces of wood. And I finally got one that fit my hand the way that I wanted. And I walked back into the house. And your dad, my grandfather, had gone out on the front porch. And in Louisiana and most of the South, they have the houses that are built up off the ground because of for the floods. Right. He was standing on the front porch. She said, I walked out and I touched him on the shoulder because he had his back to me. Mm -hmm. She said, I wanted him to see what was coming. She said, I tapped him on the back of love. She said, he turned around and wrote. She said, I reared back with everything I had mm -hmm. and hit him upside his head. Mm -hmm. He fell over on the ground. Said he looked up at me and he said, Rosie, which is my grandmother's name. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? She said, I put my hands on my hips and said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find out just how crazy I am. Thank you. If you ever do that again. Mm -hmm. She said, I told him, you sleep here. You eat here. Yes. You better not put your hands on me like that again. Because if I can't get you one way, I will get you another. Thank you. But I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Yeah. That's so fun. I was married when I was 16 years old. My mm -hmm. son was born when I was 16. We're living in the projects in Los Angeles. My husband was in the military coming home on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And he was getting ready to go out on the weekend with this buddy of his. And I asked him, are you going out again? And he turned around and slapped me. Oh, no. <laughs> I stumbled back and we had a little cheap wrought iron coffee table. Hello. As I stumbled back over that table, the rod iron came off, leg came off of the table. That was. And I came up with the rod iron in my hand. Uh huh. And he looked at me and started to try to get to the front door of the run iron. And I did what my grandmother said. I let him have it with everything that I had from that right. rod iron. He fell on the ground, on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I opened the front door and kicked him out the rest of it and closed the door. I called the police. We lived in Watts and two African-American police officers came out. Mm -hmm. They knocked on the door and my name, my name was Miss Hill. Mm -hmm. Miss Hill opened the door. I said, who is it? It's the police. So I opened the door and they came in and my husband was down there sitting down on the step rubbing his head. <laughs> well, I had hit him. So the police looked at him and they looked at me. They said, now which one of you called? <laughs> and I told them, I did. Right. And they said, why did you call him? I said, because he hit me. Right. I said, and my grandmother told me, don't ever let a man hit you and Thank get away you. with it. Because Thank if they do you. it one time, they'll, they'll continue. Over. Yes. So <laughs> the police told us, Mr. Hill, you come here. He said, you see this little woman right here? You better not hit this little woman anymore. Uh -huh. Right. This little woman will kill you. Right. And I said, don't tell him anything because if you come out again, you better bring the wagon with you Thank because you. he will be dead. Thank you. <laughs> so, so they, they looked at me and said, shut their heads up, Mr. Hill. I mean it. That's right. This little woman ain't playing. Right. And I meant exactly what never happened again. Thank okay? you. Okay, never. See, when you don't love yourself, you put up with crap. You will put up with disrespect. You are so desperate, you think that you can't get anything better. Baby, you don't think anything of yourself. That's the problem. You don't love yourself, so you don't demand love from anybody else.